I was born in Somalia. Uh, my childhood, I was a fairly normal childhood up until when the civil war disrupted our lives. And like most of us, uh, we were violently uprooted from our home country to uh, Kenya. And so my initial uh, life as a young man was in a refugee camp the first couple of years. Uh, I was fortunate to have some scholarships that took me outside of Kenya to do my undergraduate in international finance and then ultimately came to the U.S. to do my master's in IT. My entry point into life in the United States was in the Washington DC metro area. Yeah, so there was nobody. Uh, I just brought myself. I, I do remember that I had only $50 in my pocket and I did not know anybody. Uh, so it was overwhelming to some, uh, to some extent. But if I think about it, it was overwhelming but exciting at the same time. I mean, it's, it's, it's a weird place to be, you know, you don't know what tomorrow will, will bring. The opportunity for me was when I read an article in the Washington Post uh, about the plight of Somalis in Minnesota. So the article was basically talking about how there was a large Somali population in Minnesota, but they were having a very hard time adjusting into life in Minnesota. And, and so whether they were missing out on the connection on the financial uh, side or, the, or just basically the structure of life here was not in pace with life with all Minnesota. And so I felt like there was a very distinct connection that I got from reading that article that made me go to my boss and give him my two weeks notice. And he never understood why I did that. Why is it that you're going to disrupt your life in DC and move to a place that you don't know anybody there? You have nothing lined up and yet you are willing to go there. And, and to his point, I didn't know how cold Minnesota was. And now twice a year, I second guess myself why I'm here, knowing that we have minus 55 degree temperatures. But that opportunity, that distinct connection only comes to you when you are an immigrant yourself and nobody can teach you that, nobody can make you do something unless it's in you. And, and that is a connection, the bond that I got from just reading this one article about the Somalis in Minnesota. And so I, I, I did a lot of work in technology as an, as an employee. And to some extent, I was enjoying that. But as a community, I felt like we were not participating in this space. If you think about the, the IT sector, so we are all in the 21st century digital economy. The whole world is moving towards that. But if you think about who is there or who is not there, 99% of us as immigrant, first generation uh, people of color in Minnesota are not in the high tech space. And everything else is moving towards that. And so it, it almost became a personal calling for me. If we really want to uplift our communities, I should not be comfortable just making the money myself. I should be thinking about more of us moving into uh, this, this uh, sector. And that's why our organization right now basically is educating the future workforce, the future STEM workforce. We teach coding in middle school and high schools in the Twin Cities. So I, I live in the East Metro. I, I have a family, wife and three kids. Um, I am a soccer fanatic. I used to play soccer. And, and uh, until now, I have very specific European soccer teams that I must watch on a daily basis, how they're doing. My contribution is just to actively work on making sure that Minnesota is a society for everybody. And, and how can we then go take a few steps back and encourage most of our immigrant populations to go into STEM. And so this is my personal calling. I, I, am, I, I, I look forward to every single day uh, going out there and educating young kids uh, on the, the importance of STEM coding and, and uh, making them get excited and making them see themselves as creators of technology. I want people to shift their mindset from being just users of technology to creators of technology. And once you make the shift, then everything is possible.